all this comes out of ignorance. Of course, love the, has to be there, but love never gives you attachment because it is wise, it is wisdom. Supposing in a tree the sap of the tree goes and gets fixed in one fruit because it loves its mind, then what happens to the rest of the tree? It dies and that fruit also dies. So this mamatva has to go out. But by telling it will not go, by just advising you it will not go, even if you suffer. I have seen so many people coming to Me, My own father deceived Me, My own son deceived Me. I said, which one is your own? The one who deceived you is not your own. My husband, there are some ladies who eat My head out of their husbands. My husband did this, My husband did this, My husband did this. Baba, why don't you hit him hard and finish with it? <laughs> but it's so much accepted this mamatva, this attachment. Attachment to money, attachment to people, attachment to this is nothing but a hook which hooks you to baser level. You have to rise above and then you really enjoy the beauty of richness. As I told you the other day, I see all beautiful things, it's nice I don't possess them. See now these carpets are spread here. If they were Mine, I should worry, Oh God, now I hope they are not going to be spoiled. I hope nobody sits on them. I hope they are insured. So nobody runs away with that. But when they don't belong to Me, I'm enjoying them better. Other people's things is a better idea. This myth carries us to such an extent of stupidity that sometimes I feel whether these human beings are human beings or they are their possessions. Their spirit is lost, Everything is lost, they are not bothered, but if their little position is lost, they weep and wail and as if they are dead, their forefathers are dead hundred times. But people like Me are just bachas, emperors. They are not bothered. To them, comfort cannot capture. They don't need any comfort. If you have comfort, it falls upon you. It makes you a slave too. If you seek comfort, you are in for enslavement. Take it from you. Any kind of comfort. It's only human beings who can become really so crazy. No animal can become. There's another type of a comfort is that a mental idea that everybody must appreciate and that you should be able to overpower others. This also comes, I think, from Nabhichara. It's a kind of a feeling that you should be able to overpower many people, they should look at you. These days in London there are women who are suffering from a funny disease called anorexia where they just don't eat. Women just don't eat because they should be thin and skinny. For what? For what you should be thin and skinny? Because you look attractive. But for what? I don't think skinny people look attractive by any chance. Horrible. They create only pity in you. I, I, and you feel, you know, repulsive about the whole stuff. Once a beauty came, queen came to see Me, I thought she, she was a TB patient. And I said, well, you look all right, but it seems you are a TB patient. She said, no, Mother, I've got a beauty prize. I said, eh? <laughs> Who were the people? Doctors must have given you because they want some patients there. 
This is the trouble. We go out of the way to trouble our Nabi, not to eat your food, fasting. If you want to fast this life, next life you will not have any food. Thank you very much. No food. Fasting, all right. You will have a permanent fasting. What do you say? You don't have to do any fasting. Why do you want to fast? And even if you want to fast because you want to change the timing or maybe for your health sake, it's all right. But why in the name of God you want to malign Him? You have got everything to eat and you don't want to eat. Those who have got food to eat, they don't want to eat. Next life they become poor and then they blame the rich. But in last life you did wanted to fast. So this life you are not given any food because you ask for it. And that is how also the Nabi Chakra gets you twisted when you fast like mad. There is no need to fast in the name of God. God has given you all the wealth, all the beauty, all the love. Actually, in Sahaja Yoga, if you fast in My name, I think it's horrible because if you want to trouble your mother or to make her uneasy or take a revenge on her, then you say, Mother, I'm not going to eat My food. Then Mother is finished. That's the best way to conquer her, to say, Mother, I'm not going to eat My food. So this kind of a mad fasting is also very bad for your Navi. And when you do that, then you have a problem because you are invaded by your left-sided, uh, what you call the beyond the Ira Nadi, you have the collective subconscious and you are invaded by them and you are in for trouble physically, mentally, emotionally. And mostly those people who fast are very hot. -tuck. The day their fasting day is there, never go near them because they are already planning what they are going to eat. <laughs> and in the morning they plan and they don't get it, so they are very angry for that one. All these asahaja things are not going to happen. You have to be normal people. You don't have to put up into tension yourself for Sahaja Yoga, nothing. Be normal. Be nice people, don't torture yourself. That is one point on the Navi on the left hand side and on the right hand side don't get into indulgences. Don't pamper yourself. Both things are the same for Sahaja Yoga, whether you starve or you overeat, is the same. There is no difference between the two because if you are not on the seat, whether you are on the left falling or the right, does it make any difference? So to be on the seat is to be in the blessings of Sri Lakshmi and I have described to you how Sri Lakshmi is a lady. And in her left hand she has got two lotuses and the right one lotus and right hand another lotus on top. It shows a person who is balancing. She is balancing on a lotus. Imagine she is standing on a lotus. That means she's balancing. And she's balancing, she's standing there, and she is holding two lotuses in her hand, showing that she's like a lotus. A person who is a rich man, Lakshmi Pati, has to be like a lotus, warm, pink, warm. And even a horrible thing like Madhukar ko kya kate hain Vrajji ne? Vishwapuna. Vasp like thing. I don't know what you call in English, you don't have that black thing. Uh, we have a very big black wasp, you see, which is hard, hard like nut and has angular thorny legs. That black thing comes in, Bhavra, and is good for nothing. But come see, for the residence, for the ashraya, the lotus keeps it. 
on top of its karma, which is a very, very soft thing, with all love. And in the night it closes down so that the poor insect, who is just like a gnat, should not get any trouble from the outside weather. Like a mother who takes a child in the archer, that love should be there for a Lakshmi Pati. How many are Lakshmi Patis like that? Have you seen any? If they see somebody who is coming with money propositions, then they may open their doors. Otherwise, they have no love for anyone. And those who come to for their ashrayas, for their help, they are not there. On the other side are the people who are so repulsive. They are not like lotus. There is no fragrance. They are such miserly people that they stink of miserliness, while the lotus gives its fragrance through that mud, through that horrible thing, that even the little worms which crawl upon those lotus petals smell of those beautiful fragrance. This is what it has to be. It has to give. It has to be beautiful. It has to be cozy. It has to be welcome. Then another hand is giving. The Lakshmi is always giving. She doesn't receive. She just gives. If you are really a Lakshmi Pati, you don't want to have anything from anyone. You don't receive. If you are really rich, who can enrich you more? What can you give to a person who is fully rich? There's no way of entering into it. Now it's all up to the brain. He's rich up to the brain. Then what will you give? You cannot give anything. But where you have to give means that he's a beggar. He's still a beggar. All these so called rich people who still are hankering money are still beggars. They are not rich. They may think themselves empty vessels, but they are not rich because they are still expecting money. So it is important that we should understand the money is not the way. Money takes us away from dharma, it takes us away from God, it takes us away from reality, it covers our eyes. We don't think that we have to follow a path of righteousness and of virtue. Because we think we are rich, God is going to be afraid of us. We can even purchase Him and can manage Him by giving some bribes. That's not so. You must face yourself. You have to face yourself that it's not the money that's going to give you that elation, that higher life. But it is the love of God, the honesty of seeking, honesty. That is the quality of this chakra, is the satya.